Hi, my name is Stephanie Murdoch. I'm a registered nurse and a childbirth educator, and this is my Mindful Childbirth course. I have to say I am super excited about this course. This is something that I'm really passionate about and I'm excited to talk about some natural ways to get through pain during labor. I think this course is great for someone who is looking to go unmedicated during their labor or if you just want some coping mechanisms and pain management strategies to get through labor until you can get that epidural. The thing about labor is you never know what turn it's going to take. You may have planned to get an epidural and let's say your labor progressed faster than you thought so you didn't have time. Or maybe your body doesn't take to the epidural and you still are feeling the effects of labor. If you haven't prepared for this, your experience could be less than ideal. Unmedicated delivery is something that you have to have prepared for. And so this class is gonna give you the tools and techniques. We talk about breathing techniques, visualization, and relaxation to help you get through labor and birth. The great thing about these techniques is they transfer over into your everyday life. Motherhood can be stressful, parenthood can be stressful, our careers and jobs can be stressful, and just everyday life throws things at us that can make us be thrown for a loop. And so these techniques are ways to recenter and refocus and help us to calm and get through the day composed and with the confidence that we need. As a registered nurse, I worked as a transition nursery nurse. Now what this means is I would be called at the same time that your doctor is called. What you may not know is that your doctor doesn't come to the delivery room. Usually, um, you know, they'll come and check on you, but they're not there for the whole delivery. You've got your nurse and your support person and whoever else you choose to have in the delivery room with you. But your doctor will come when that baby's ready to come out. And so that's when I would be called at the same times when that baby is crowning and ready to come out. And I saw, I mean, a countless number of births. When I attended deliveries during an unmedicated delivery, those babies did so well. They didn't struggle with breathing, their vital signs were great, and they were able to breastfeed well. Now, when I attended births of C-sections or epidurals, it was about 50-50 on which way the baby would go. And that's not to say that those moms made a bad decision with what they chose to do. I just noticed a difference. And so I thought if I could, make it through a delivery unmedicated, I wanted to do that. With of course having an open mind to the epidural and that's one thing that I preach in this course is to keep an open mind, that we have these medical interventions that are there to help us, we're grateful that we have them and they're there when we need them. But whatever delivery you are planning on with your circumstances and what you choose to do, the bottom line is these breathing and coping strategies and techniques will help you to get through the unexpected during labor. In this course, we talk about how the uterine muscles work during labor and delivery, and we talk about how you can work with your body to help progress that labor and have a comfortable birthing experience. With my specific labor and delivery, I progressed a lot faster than you would expect for a first time mom. I'm not sure if it was just my own body physiology or it was because I was relaxed and prepared for a unmedicated delivery. Research shows that Typically, people who have prepared for an unmedicated delivery, their labors go faster because you're allowing your body to work in harmony with those contractions. I don't know in my specific circumstance if that's why I progressed so fast, but even if I had wanted that epidural, by the time I got to the hospital and was in the hospital bed admitted, I was complete and ready to push. So I wouldn't have had time to get that epidural. And I know that if I hadn't prepared, it might've been a pretty traumatic experience for me because there was a moment even with all of my preparation where I felt like I couldn't do it I felt out of control but I had to go in really deep within myself and remember those breathing techniques and those got me through my labor and delivery I had such a positive experience I'm pregnant with baby number two right now and I'm planning to do it the same way if I can so that should tell you that I fully believe in this and I recommend it to everyone who can do it So in creating this course, I wanted to combine the medical aspect of unmedicated delivery 
we use the techniques from the Mongan method of hypnobirthing, and I realized that a lot of people have this negative connotation with the word hypnobirthing. Some people think it's hokey or they use the word crunchy around it, and I wanted to bring in the medical basis and backing behind these breathing and relaxation and visualization techniques. So when I came up with this curriculum, I brought in a lot of the more medical aspect of why unmedicated delivery is so beneficial for mom and baby. And then also we talk about unmedicated delivery in the hospital setting. I'm really excited for this mindful childbirth course. I know you guys are gonna love it. Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to my mindful childbirth course. Um, this course is something that I am super excited for. I'm really passionate about uh, teaching others about breathing and relaxation and visualization techniques to help get through labor unmedicated. I had an unmedicated delivery myself with my little guy and my labor actually progressed a lot quicker than what you would expect for a first time mom. So by the time I got to the hospital and was admitted and was in the hospital bed, even if I had wanted an epidural, I wouldn't have been able to get one. And so my biggest point with this course is whether or not you're planning to go unmedicated, I think it's super important to prepare mentally and physically for birth. These are just great things to know about your body, to be in tune with your body, and to just be a part of your labor. So we'll just get started. You can read there. We have tons of things to go over. We're going to start out with a few of my very favorite quotes. Childbirth is a normal, natural, and healthy function for women. As such, birth can be accomplished gently and calmly for the very large number of women who are not in a high-risk situation. <clears throat> and that's from Marie Mongan. So I do want to add that this course, we take a lot of influence from the Mongan method, which is a type of hypnobirthing. I wanted to create a course that was a little more geared towards hospital birth and a modern take on hypnobirthing. I know it has kind of a negative stigmatism towards it and some people think hypnobirthing is kind of crunchy. And so this is a modern take on hypnobirthing and the Mongan method. Meditation can help mothers align with their own innate capacity to be able to give birth gently, comfortably, and joyfully. We don't promise births that are totally free of discomfort, but we passionately believe that comfortable birthing is a possibility for mothers. So choosing to give birth naturally doesn't mean that interventions will not be needed or that complications will not occur. Nature's plan for birth includes pleas for help when help is needed. Choosing a natural childbirth or unmedicated is a better word I think, means that you'll prepare for a birth um, confident in your own ability to give birth being willing to feel contractions, and also finding comfort in response to what you're feeling. It means that you're, you'll be surrounded by family, friends, professionals, whoever you choose to, to have in place in the birthing room who are going to encourage you to trust your wisdom and yourself. It means that wherever you give birth, the hospital, birthing center, or home, you'll have the freedom that you need to respond to your contractions. I wanted to add at the bottom there with that little star that we know how to give birth without machines, epidurals, and fear, but that we're mindful that there are those options if special circumstances arise and so grateful that we have modern medicine to help us when we need that help. Okay, so benefits of natural childbirth. This is a big one and I'm going to talk about each one of these separately. So the first one is labor is often shorter. Epidurals and other pain relieving medications often lead to a slower delivery. Um, pain meds often interfere with the body's natural way of laboring and can actually slow down contractions. So this increases your total laboring period. In addition, women often don't feel their contractions and don't know when to push. So by not pushing at key times or with adequate strength, you're not able to facilitate the laboring process. You might miss important opportunities to work with the rhythms of your body, and you're also less likely to be bladder catheterized, 
or be at risk for vacuum or forceps delivery. Uh, if you are given an epidural, then you're automatically signed up pretty much for um, a bladder catheter. And then the risk of forceps or vacuum delivery um, we talk about in the childbirth class. So another great benefit of natural childbirth is there's just less um, medical interventions. Because epidurals disconnect women from the natural pushing action and prolonged labor, Doctors are prone to intervene in the slowed birthing process and might give a Pitocin drip, which is oxytocin, a uterine stimulant, or use a, vac a vacuum or forceps like we talked about to help move the birth along and move the fetus through the birth canal. Breastfeeding is facilitated. Um, a little explanation there. So this was actually the biggest reason why I personally chose to prepare for an unmedicated delivery. As I worked in the um, nursing field and was attending deliveries every day, as a nursery nurse, I noticed that babies who were born to mothers who had gone on medicated were alert, they didn't have problems with breathing, and they were able to breastfeed that first time super well. Natural childbirth is often healthier for mom and baby, and this just has to do with less medical interventions um, and less medicine being introduced into your body. Faster recovery time. Obviously natural childbirth is empowering. I think all birth is empowering. So that's a benefit of just childbirth in general. Um, and then the likelihood for complications to baby decreases. So whenever you introduce medicine, um, for example, an epidural, um, an epidural is a regional anesthetic. So it means that not only does it get to you, it's gonna be getting to your baby. And as you can imagine, that can cause complications for baby. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about how fear affects labor. For birth, we care most about the outer layer and the inner layer of the uterine muscles. In the next video, I'm actually going to explain the process of your body that you're going to be working with during labor, and it's the way birthing muscles are designed to work in perfect harmony. Hey guys, my name is Stephanie Murdoch, and in this video, we're going to be talking about how the uterine muscles work during labor. So there are three muscle groups in the uterus that we'll talk about. We have the outer layer, the middle layer, and then the inner layer. The two most important muscle groups during labor and contractions are the outer and the inner. So we're just going to be focusing on those two during this video. The outer layer is vertical, so it's going up and down like this, and the muscle fibers get more concentrated and stronger at the top. So if you imagine it like a 3D image, it's like this at the top, okay? And then the inner layer is just the opposite. The inner layer is horizontal, and they're going around the uterus, so around your baby. And it's kind of like this. Okay, so here's our uterus, it's like this. Once we get closer to the neck of the uterus, these fibers become closer together and tighter, and then that neck of the uterus leads into the cervix. Your cervix kind of looks like this. Um, if you're looking in through a speculum, this is what your cervix, cervix looks like. So this would be the opening of your cervix, that tiny, tiny hole. So this would be a cervix that is closed and tight. Um, I usually describe the cervix to be similar to a large marshmallow. So it has to thin out and then also the the dilation process has to happen so that opening has to relax and dilate and open for baby to be able to come through. Let's just talk about the functions of these outer and inner layers and how they work together during labor for your benefit. In order for your cervix to dilate, like we just talked about, the inner layers, which are tight right at the bottom, have to relax and open. They pull up, okay? And the way they do this is during a contraction, your outer layers, which are vertical at the top, they um, contract together 
and they actually push down kind of in a wave-like motion to help expel the baby through the uterus. So that's what's pushing that baby's head down onto your cervix. Now your inner muscles need to just be relaxed and not tense so that when that pushing comes down, it actually draws these inner muscles up. So I do have a little visual and I'm not an artist, so I apologize. So here we, I'm just showing you kind of more, a better visual than my hands of what this looks like. So we have the outer uterine muscles and you can see at the top is where they get more concentrated. And then the inner layer of the uterine muscles, the horizontal layer, and they're concentrated down here at the bottom. So this part is the part that needs to relax and draw back for that cervix to be able to um, dilate, thin, and open. And these outer layers are what helps it. When, when the outer layers contract and push down, they pull this inner layer up. So this is what happens in an ideal labor where mama is relaxed and the muscles are working together. When mom is in a comfortable, relaxed state, these two sets of muscles work in harmony and they work as they should. So during a contraction, we'll go over this one more time. During a contraction, the vertical muscles, they draw up, okay? So the vertical muscles are drawing up, they flex and expel. So they're pushing that baby's head down. And then the inner layer muscles relax and open and draw up to allow that cervix to then thin and dilate. And in an ideal situation, birthing is easy and it runs smoothly um, and baby's able to be born without complications. So let's talk about what happens when there's fear or tension involved during labor to these muscles. As you can imagine, if there's fear or tension, these inner muscles can't relax and do their job. Your vertical muscles are still going to do their job because that's part of the contraction, okay? So these inner muscles are going to keep pushing down, but they're going to be pushing down onto strong inner muscles that aren't going to move. As you can imagine, that's going to cause considerable pain for mom. And it's also distressing to the baby because the baby's head's being pushed down onto a bony pelvis um, and a cervix that won't dilate. And so as a result, you're getting decreased oxygen and blood flow to the uterus and to baby. So that's why, that's where this mindful childbirthing comes in, where we prepare for birth, um, release our fear surrounding birth, and then also um, practicing breathing techniques to help us get through these hard contractions and relax our bodies so that these muscles can work in harmony with each other. In the next few slides of the Mindful Childbirth course, we're gonna talk about the central nervous system and how that plays into effect when we have fear. Um, when we are stressed, we actually secrete the hormone catecholamine. That's the stress hormone. And if that is being secreted, our body's going into the fight or flight um, or freeze stage. The uterus is not considered one of your primary um, de defense orga organs. And so the blood flow is not going to your uterus. It's going to everything else because your body's not thinking that you're in this fight or flight mode. Your body says we need to send the oxygen and the blood flow to the important organs. Well, in this instance, the uterus is the most important organ. So if we allow that fear and that stress to come into our labors, we're doing our bodies a disservice. We are shunting the blood and oxygen away from the uterus, and the uterus needs that oxygen to be able to have effective contractions so that your muscles, your inner layer, and your outer layer can work together in that wave to then just thin and open up that cervix. If we are relaxed, breathing, we allow ourselves to um, create those natural endorphins, catecholamine can't be released. If endorphins are being released, the catecholamines can't be there and we can take that stress fear out of the equation. Our bodies can be relaxed and in the right state to have a comfortable and relaxed birth. So that's my brief rundown of how the uterine muscles work during labor and we'll, we'll continue our discussion on this topic in our mindful childbirth course on the next few slides.